Greaves Cook, tourism stakeholder. Welcome to the JSO interview. Thank you, John. Well, I've called you a tourism stakeholder. Perhaps in your own words, you might explain why you are wedded to this industry in a way. Well, John, I've been involved in <clears throat> tourism to Kenya for a little over 40 years now. I started in 1972 in the Mara, in the days when there was only one lodge there. And I moved on, I was MD of the Block Hotels Group, which at the time was a well-established hotel company in this country. Uh, after that, I moved to UK and I worked with Kuoni, uh, which was the biggest long haul tour operator as a marketing director. And then I started a business called Tropical Places, which brought clients to Kenya. And then I came back at the end of the 90s. Um, and I was then involved in developing uh, wildlife conservancies with Maasai communities. And I also got involved in the industry as chairman of the Kenya Tourism Federation, chairman of the Ecotourism Society of Kenya. I was appointed to the board of KTB and I served as chairman for six years, two terms there. So I have had quite an involvement in tourism over the years. And it bears saying that you are a Kenyan, you're a Kenyan citizen. Now, now, Kiswahili vizuri sana, I'm a civil. I would take any kudos for having Sadifu Kiswahili, but yes, we're both Kenyans. So our country, our concerns, the Jubilee Manifesto. Time is not on our side. I'm going to hit you with the solutions being offered in this industry. We'll take it for granted that our viewers have the groundwork. They appreciate that tourism is a major player in our lives. We're always told at school, coffee, tea, tourism, those were the big three. And it remains more or less so, perhaps horticulture now, flower growing in as, an, as inputs. Tourism. The Jubilee Coalition, the new government, wishes to promote Kenya as an end destination rather than a stopover and to end up with three million visitors a year. Now we have a target now of three million. At present we have about 1.2 to my understanding. Comment on this idea of increased number of tourists. Well I think it's good that the government has recognized the importance of tourism and that it's worth trying to increase the revenue from tourism and the arrivals. Tourism is the fastest growing industry in the world. It's actually bigger than oil and computers or anything else. And Kenya has a fantastic opportunity to be a player in world tourism and to expand significantly. But it has to be done in the right way. First of all, we have to recognize that tourists tend to travel to this country in only four months of the year. Primarily, they come here in July, August, September, October. And the rest of the time, there are far fewer tourists. So if we're going to double, we're going to need increased capacity to accommodate visitors. Because what you'll find in many years is that those peak months of July, August, September, all the, all the accommodation is running pretty full. And we're not going to be able to increase the numbers of tourists who come here unless we have more accommodation facilities. Also, we're going to need to have more airlines coming in. Because in order to bring in three million tourists, you're going to need considerably more flights flying into this country. So we're going to have to find ways of uh, encouraging airlines to come in here. We've had some new airlines uh, coming in in recent times, uh, but they need to be encouraged. We need to engage with them. We need to look at our airport, which at the moment is seen as being fairly second rate. Ethiopia at Addis has a far better airport than we do. And we also need to make sure when we expand the accommodation that it's done so in a planned way. We can't just have a mushrooming of uh, ill-designed facilities coming up all over the place. We need to have a quality of our hotel infrastructure and it needs to be planned and done properly. I'm going to come back with some of the thoughts that come to mind when you've said that, but I would like to exhaust the bullet points and if we've got time enough, we can come back to some of my concerns. Provide incentives to encourage investment in tourist accommodation to increase hotel bed capacity across the country. Have you already touched upon that in your earlier comments? Incentives, accommodation, capacity, key words. Well, I think it's, it's good the government recognises that in order to uh, get to three million tourists, if that's the target, then we're going to need more accommodation, as I was mentioning. But where does that accommodation come from? Uh, it's going to come from private investment. We need to have inward direct investment from international hotel groups. People get terribly anxious about foreign companies 
owning things in Kenya. But when they own a hotel, they can't take it away. And the, the countries that have the most successful tourism industries often have foreign investment to help to develop the infrastructure required. So there's a need for incentives, tax incentives, for foreign companies to invo get involved in direct investment. But there's also a need for Kenyans and Kenyan companies to be able to get into the tourism industry and to develop properties of the right sort in the right place. Infrastructure. Introduce incentives, diversify products and improve other infrastructure requirements to encourage such investments. Is the manifesto simply repeating itself over a series of bullet points or are these particular concerns? Because you're going to say exactly the same to me, thing to me about in infrastructure as you said about incentives. Not so? No, I think infrastructure is, is vital and infrastructure quite often has to be provided by the government. I don't think that the, uh, the building of accommodation facilities is something the government should be involved in. That's for the private sector. But normally when it comes to such things as roads, which is a typical example, or electricity, the government tends to be involved in that. Now we have uh, a glaring need at the moment for a, a bypass uh, from the airport in, in Mombasa to the south coast. At the moment, all the tourists staying on the south coast have to go on the Lakoni ferry, which just puts more and more, uh, more and more demand on the ferry. And it's not the ideal way of taking international visitors who've just flown in to a hotel on the south coast. We need the infrastructure to get them there. Also, the road to the Mara has been in an appalling condition. It's been a bit like driving on the moon. Craters everywhere, people getting stuck overnight when it rains. So infrastructure is important if we're going to have a tourism industry that is to expand. Enhance the mandate and increase the funding of the Kenya Tourist Board, of which you were chairman, as you say, for six years. To Now, this Tourist Board, to my understanding, and perhaps to yours, is going to change in structure. So do they get it wrong by referring to it when it's going to change? Uh, what is going to be the new KTB? Well, at the moment, we have a National Tourism Board, which is the KTB, and that is what is in existence at the moment. Uh, there's a, a CEO and there's a team of staff, executives, and a tourism board has a function of essentially promoting a destination in the key overseas markets. Right. May, may I just interrupt you there and say these appointments in Kenyan politics and in Kenyan government, is it jobs for the boys, political jobs? And we've basically got people in an industry who know nothing about it, who don't have the experience of a Jake Greaves Cook. But there they are speaking on behalf of our tourism. Therefore, they are inputs for the worst. Well, in recent times, the KTB has had um, a board comprising people from the industry with a great deal of experience. So if you look at the boards that have been in place over the years, over recent years, since its establishment really, the tourist board has had people with years and years of experience and has also had people representing communities. So I, I had a great deal of faith in our board with all the expertise that was there, both financial marketing, uh, aviation, hotels, and tour operating, international marketing. We had some good members on the board of directors. Then in terms of the CEO and his team, they, those were not political appointments. I can't speak for other parastatals, but in the case of KTB, uh, the MD was appointed after advertising, through interviews, and he was, he was appointed as a result of the board selecting a short list of three people, and the minister then took the advice of the board uh, and appointed uh, the MD. So I think that uh, the board has actually been conducting itself in quite an appropriate way. And as a result, you've seen the effectiveness of the small amount of money that's been available to KTV to market the country. In the, when the advertising campaigns were run, we've managed to recover. If you recall, uh, after the Likoni clashes, we had a collapse of tourism. The Kenya Tourism Board was involved in a marketing campaign. There was a recovery, we succeeded. And by 2007, we were hitting all the records. Then we had the post-election violence, tourism collapsed again. There was an effort again to, uh, to carry out marketing and to reassure the source markets. And again, by 2011, we saw a recovery.